The nonconformist conscience was the moralistic influence of the nonconformist churches in British politics in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Moral outlook. Historians group Methodists together with other Protestant groups as nonconformists or dissenters standing in opposition to the established Church of England. In the 19th century the dissenters who went to chapel comprised half the people who actually attended services on Sunday. They were based in the fast-growing urban middle class. The nonconformist conscience was their moral sensibility which they tried to implement in British politics. The two categories of dissenters, or nonconformists, were in addition to the evangelicals a low church element in the Church of England. Old dissenters, dating from the 16th and 17th centuries, included Baptists, Congregationalists, Quakers, Unitarians, and Presbyterians outside Scotland. New dissenters emerged in the 18th century and were mainly Methodists. The nonconformist conscience of the old group emphasized religious freedom and equality, pursuit of justice, and opposition to discrimination, compulsion, and coercion. The new dissenters and also the Anglican evangelicals stressed personal morality issues, including sexuality, temperance, family values, and Sabbath keeping. Both factions were politically active, but until mid-19th century the old group supported mostly Whigs and Liberals in politics, while the new, like most Anglicans, generally supported Conservatives. In the late 19th the new dissenters mostly switched to the Liberal Party. The result was a merging of the two groups, strengthening their great weight as a political pressure group. The joined together on new issues especially regarding schools and temperance, with the latter of special interest to Methodists. By 1914 the linkage was weakening and by the 1920s it was virtually dead. History The phrase gained wide currency during the campaign by the Welsh Methodist Hugh Price Hughes against the participation in politics of the divorcee Sir Charles Dilke 1886 and the adulterer Charles Stuart Parnell 1890, believing that political leaders should possess high moral integrity. In Britain one strong base of Liberal Party support was nonconformist Protestantism, such as the Methodists and Presbyterians. The nonconformist conscience rebelled against having an adulterer Parnell play a major role in the Liberal Party. The Liberal Party leader William Gladstone warned that if Parnell retained his powerful role the leadership, it would mean the loss of the next election, the end of their alliance and also of home rule. The high point of the nonconformist conscience came with the nonconformist opposition to the Education Act 1902, in which nonconformist voluntary schools were taken over by state authorities. Ali Halevi wrote that, "...thorough out the nonconformist and radical ranks frenzied excitement prevailed. To read the liberal newspapers of the day you would imagine that the Cecils were preparing to revive the policy of Lord if not of Strafford, and that in every village a nonconformist Hampton was about to rise against their persecution." By 1914 the nonconformist conscience was in decline and during the Great War ecumenism gained popularity. By 1938, David Lloyd George remarked that these changes had killed off the influence of the nonconformist conscience. In 1943, the United Reformed Minister and theologian Harry Francis Lovell Cox published the book The Nonconformist Conscience, in which he declared that, The nonconformist conscience is the mark of a spiritual aristocracy, a counterblast to coronets and mitres. Topic Notes Topic Further reading D. W. Bebbington, The Nonconformist Conscience, Chapel and Politics, eighteen seventy to nineteen fourteen, London, nineteen eighty two. Raymond G. Cowherd, 
The politics of English descent, the religious aspects of liberal and humanitarian reform movements from 1815 to 1848 1956. Richard Helmstatter, The Nonconformist Conscience, in Peter Marsh, ed., The Conscience of the Victorian State 1979, pp. 135–72, J. Kent, Hugh Price Hughes and the Nonconformist Conscience, in G. V. Bennett and J. D. Walsh, Eds, Essays in Modern English Church History, in Memory of Norman Sykes, 1966, pp. 181-205. Stephen Coss, Nonconformity in Modern British Politics, London, 1975. Christopher Oldstone Moore. The Fall of Parnell, Hugh Price Hughes and the Nonconformist Conscience. Air Island 1996 30 No. 4 pp 94 110. Primary sources John H. Y. Briggs and Ian Sellers, eds. Victorian Nonconformity. David M. Thompson, ed. Nonconformity in the Nineteenth Century, 1972.